KDK political editor John Delano has spent all day long working the phones, calling his sources, and talking with local lawmakers in Washington, D.C. And he joins us now with some inside accounts of what it was like at the Capitol today. John, who all have you spoken with? Well, Ken and Kim, I spoke with, or at least uh, texted with, three out of four of our local congressmen, our two U.S. senators. Every one of them is safe, but many of them, or all of them, frankly, have been in lockdown, some in some uh, locations that they will not disclose. But I was able to get uh, Congressman Mike Doyle on a Zoom call with me right in the middle of all this. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Are you okay? Yeah, John, um, most of us have been ordered to shelter in place uh, in our office. We evacuated once on a bomb threat. Uh, then they let us back in, and, and now we've been evacuated, or not, we've been ordered to shelter in place. Um, these protesters have breached the Capitol, and they are literally steps outside the door of the House of Representatives, and there are people actually in the Senate. These are the people the president encouraged to come to the Capitol, and this president hasn't said a damn thing to tell them to stand down. He is allowing this to take place. He is personally responsible for anything bad that happens today. There's a lot of people out there and a lot of our Capitol Police officers and National Guard, and they're trying to show tremendous restraint. This president's behavior, since he lost the election and he lost the election on November 3rd, has been reprehensible and, and it has to stop. Uh, it just has to stop. This is not what any Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, uh, thinks about when they think about this country. Uh, this is not how we solve our problems. He's got to stop lying to the American people. And, and members of the Republican Party who are his enablers need to stop too. It's not every Republican. There's a lot of Republicans that are standing by the Constitution uh, and are doing what's right. I'm not here to condemn the entire Republican Party because that's not accurate. Uh, but there are some people in the Senate and the House who enable this behavior and uh, right now, some of them are hiding under desks in the House floor as the people that they've riled up are now storming the Capitol. Now, this, of course, was a couple hours ago. Uh, I've just been in touch with Congressman Doyle. He's still in lock-in, but the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, has announced that the House and, and the Senate both are going back in session at 8 o'clock to continue the work. They're sending a message that no protesters uh, coming into that uh, House uh, chamber is going to stop the business of the Congress, and they will continue their Electoral College readout. And by the end of their session, uh, Joe Biden will be officially declared the President of the United States. Kim? All right, John, thank you. And, and you know, John, like uh, yourself, Ken and I, many of us uh, here at KDK have been inside the uh, Capitol building as members of the media, but part of your past political repertoire is having been a congressional chief of staff as well. Can you give us a little bit of insight uh, on the layout there, the, the security protocol? Yes, uh, Kim, uh, thank you. I worked on Capitol Hill as a congressional chief of staff for 14 years, so I've spent a whole lot of part of my life in that building, and, and of course it was heartbreaking to see what was going on, the destruction of windows and, and uh, property in there, to say nothing of the death, apparently, of a young woman in there. We're not quite sure what those circumstances are all about. But the fact is that, that uh, we always thought this Capitol building was the most secure in the United States, perhaps other than the White House. And to see the breach of security, there are lots of questions that people are going to ask. Because once you get inside that Capitol building, there are underground tunnels, I've been in every one of them, that lead from the Capitol to the three Senate office buildings and to the three House buildings, which means all your senators, all your House members are potentially exposed. And so, you know, you, you like to think that there's security in this building, but obviously there was a total breakdown today. And uh, it just, uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. I know that uh, a lot of people have been upset about this. And the question is, what will the reaction be? What will the Congress do about both security and this whole question of inciting people to violence? And, you know, as Mike Doyle sort of indicated, there are some who think that some of the Republican congressmen and senators are enablers. Um, obviously, they did not intend the violence that occurred, but their words and their rhetoric and their buying into the lie 
that uh, Donald Trump won when he lost by 7 million votes just makes no sense at all. And John, and because, John, because of what happened at the Capitol today, do you expect that any Republicans who were intending to further object, there was already an objection lodged to the Arizona uh, Electoral College oh. votes, but do you suppose that because of this scene and the widespread horror uh, over it, uh, among Americans of all parties, do you suppose that some Republicans will now back away from their intention to object to other states' electoral college votes? Yeah, it's a great question, and we already hear from some members and, and senators that there's a great effort to try to make that happen. I know there's one House member who has already said that she will no longer continue to protest the other states. I mean, they've sent their message with objecting to Arizona. Do they really need to object to all these other states like Nevada, and Wisconsin and Georgia and Michigan and Pennsylvania. Yeah. I mean, they could put a stop to it right now if they wanted to. All right. Well, we'll be watching as they are scheduled to continue here within about an hour. So, John Delano, appreciate your insight. We'll be talking to you later on.